everyone. So today we have Dr. Weirs and we have Carrie, our allergy testing supervisor here, to tell us a little bit about allergy testing and how this can help our new patients and existing patients. The first question I have is, how are we different from traditional allergy testing? So we get this question all the time, and I think the main differences are we're actually doing intradermal testing. So Carrie is going to take a small amount of whatever antigen we're going to test and inject it just beneath the skin in order to raise um, essentially a, a wheel and she's then going to measure that wheel initially then we're going to wait about eight to ten minutes and come back and re-measure to see if there's an inflammatory response to see if the wheel actually increased in size. Uh, we're also going to wait over that time period we give our patients a clipboard and ask them to actually write down any symptoms that they're having if we provoke anything like a headache or you know any kind of symptom we take that into account as well and what we're looking for is basically the non-wheeling non-provoking meaning non-symptom provoking dose and that becomes our treatment dose that's the, the or what we call the neutral dose and then we don't change it so that differs uh, from other allergy techniques where they'll do scratch testing or panel testing on the back test many different things all at one time to see which which of those things wheel um, and then quite often they'll start with a very low concentration of antigen and increase it over time um, anytime that you do that there's a chance that you could create a provoking dose and that's why usually for those allergy shots you have to come to the office to get the shot and then usually they're going to watch that person for 20-30 minutes after the injection to make sure that there's not a anaphylactic response or anything like that with our dose, once we have the, the neutral, non-provoking dose, we don't change it. That, that becomes that person's dose on that antigen, and there should never be a provoked response at that dose. So it's, it's kind of a, I like to think of it as a kinder, gentler way of accomplishing immunotherapy. So we have a lot of patients that come in, not necessarily for allergies, with different autoimmune or inflammation disorders, and why do you recommend allergy testing for those patients when they say they don't have allergies? So we, we operate by the concept of the total load with really anything that we're approaching, any kind of health complaint. And I, I like the elevator analogy. I, I tell people every single one of us has an elevator. Every single one of us has a weight limit on our elevator. And to a large extent, the elevator doesn't care what's on it. It just cares about the actual load that's on that person. So one of those things that we take into account is the immunologic load, you could also say allergic load. Once again, we're kind of arguing semantics with that because a lot of people say, well, I don't have allergies. It may not be traditional allergy. It may not be, you know, when the pollen's out, you have runny nose, watery eyes, things like that. But there still could be an immunologic response to a particular antigen. And then there's basically two ways to approach that. So if we've discovered something, that is capable of provoking an inflammatory response in the person, you can either avoid that thing, so let's say it's a food, let's say it's you know wheat or dairy, might not be fun, but you can try to take that out of the diet and, and avoid it. If it's an environmental antigen, something like a pollen, we really don't have a choice. And so basically we can either move to Antarctica, or which probably wouldn't be the best thing, or we can treat it with immunotherapy to basically retrain the immune system to see that thing as no longer being a threat. What we're trying to do is introduce tolerance back to the immune system so that there's less or, or ideally no inflammatory response to benign things that there shouldn't be a response to. By doing so, we're lessening the immunologic load and hopefully thereby lessening the total load. And if you get a person's total load down to where their elevator can handle it, usually they get much, much better, hopefully completely better. And Carrie, when you've seen people respond with the non-typical sneezing or wheezing kind of reactions or the itchiness, what other symptoms do you see that lets you know that the patients could be sensitive? Well, I tell people that come in, allergies tend to attack your weakest point. So if you have a lot of joint pain, you may get joint pain while we're testing, no matter what it is that we're testing. You may get the traditional itchy eyes, watery nose, even if we're testing foods. You may get stranger symptoms like um, vision disturbances or feeling faint or dizzy. It really varies person to person. Most of the time, these are fairly mild. 
um, and can be resolved as soon as we find your neutral dose. So I tell everybody to look for any changes, better or worse, from your baseline, how you're feeling when you come in. And why is it important once a patient realizes that they're sensitive that they take further treatment to take care of their sensitivities? I would say that it just comes back to the total load. Um, to a large extent, again, the elevator doesn't care what's on it. And so using the patient's life history, I'm looking to see what are any potential things contributing to the health complaint that the person has. So again, we're looking here at the immunologic load we're also considering the infectious load, the toxic load, the stress load, um, and lots of other things. That's, that's not the end-all be-all, but um, when it comes to the immunologic load, again, your options are basically avoidance or immunotherapy as far as resolving the true root cause. Medications can help, so antihistamines, steroids, things like that, they can help with the symptoms that are not really truly adjusting the immune response, they're just helping with the symptoms. So nothing against them, they're great if you need them. But with immunotherapy, it's been shown to be the only thing that can truly retrain the immune system and adjust that response. Well, Dr. Weirs, Carrie, thank you so much for explaining that to our current patients and our existing patients that will be coming in in the future to do allergy testing. And we look forward to speaking with you guys again about allergy testing.